Okay, so last time we were here, we finished working with the anti-differentiations, right? Okay, remember, oops, let me go to a better pen than that. That's not going to work, huh? Okay, so remember we had functions where we had height equals some function of time. Who cares what it was? Whatever, right? Oops, I'm sorry. T's for time, right? Okay. Then we could get from there to the what? Well, velocity, right? Velocity by simply taking the derivative of, of the function for h, right? And now also it was h or s depending on if we're dealing with height or we're dealing with distance. Distance they call s, height they call h. And then, then we can also get from there to what other function? Acceleration. Acceleration function. And that's just taking the differential of the v function, right? And then we looked at how to go the other way, anti-differentiating those. So we finished those off, and we had some questions, and we did some homework on those. So the first thing I want to do today is talk a little bit about the questions. We'll answer some of those questions, right? I'm not doing your assignment for you, but we will go over some questions if you have them. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look at this assessment again. You've seen it briefly, but we're going to look at it again and talk about some of the... You've, you have seen your calculus one, right? Or is that the one you haven't... You just got a brief glance at it, but you didn't get to really go over it. So we're going to look at those because I want you to be prepared because we still have one more internal assessment to do, and we want to do that next time we meet. Okay? So, because we have to eventually, we have to eventually do the rest of the class, right? So is it Friday the next time we meet? Okay, then that's, when, that's good. It gives you, some, gives you some time in between, right? Because I know y'all don't do anything else but study math. Okay, so let's talk first about the homework problems that we had in, um, from last time, okay? So last time we did the acceleration problems. So what questions do you have, guys? It's going to make it even easier if you don't have any, right? So those are the ones that started on page 78. Seventy-eight. The the where we started with it, we we had the acceleration. That was the one where we had to differentiate twice or, or anti-differentiate twice. Any question about those? Oh, so that's not the one we did last time. Oh, okay. So we haven't done that. I thought I told you to do both of them. Okay. Well, we'll look at a couple from each one then. But yeah, we were, we were doing both of them because now we've done three days. All right, so what question do you have about the previous one then? Any of those you have a question about? 3B. Okay. So that's on page 74. A car is traveling at a constant velocity of 28 meters per second. Right? The driver applies the brakes and changes the velocity to... 28 minus 2t meters per second. How far will he travel during the first 10 seconds? So we're going to need the pieces of this, right? How far will he travel during the first 10 seconds after the brakes are applied? How can I, how can I tell how far? If I'm asking the question how far, yeah, that's not a, a velocity question. That's a distance question, right? Okay. So, but from this velocity... I need to first find what? Yeah, I need to find find the velocity at that point. Okay. So what I'm gonna what am I gonna do to do that? Okay. Well, how far were they traveling during the first ten seconds after the brakes are applied? And then substitute t for ten seconds for t. Okay. To so anti differentiate this. 
it's not going to be, it's no longer going to be a V, it's going to be an S. 28T. 28T. Yep. So T. So 4T plus what? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm dividing. Sorry, I was differentiating, not anti differentiating. <laughs> okay. We don't know yet, right? Okay. How far had he traveled? How far had he traveled before? So we need to know the time. So remember, that always means everything is going to be what? Zeros. So is that going to give us, so that's, when, if we put in zeros in place of those t's, what's it going to make c equal? Zero. Zero, so do we care? No. no. So our function is 28t minus t squared. And we want to do that when t is 10 seconds. So plugging in 10 for those. Okay. Excellent. So 280 minus 100 gives us S of 180. What? Meters. Okay. So they're going to travel in 10 seconds. It'll travel 180 meters after the brakes will. Play. So second, when will the car stop? Well, how fast is it going when this? How when it, if the car stops? So I'm going to put it, that's zero meters per second. So we got to go to the velocity, and I'm simply going to make the velocity become zero. Is it okay if I'm going to try to put it all on one page so that it's easier to see? So velocity is zero, which gives us 28 minus 2t. Subtract, yeah, subtract our 28 from both sides, which gives us negative 28 equals negative 2t. Yeah, divide both sides by negative 2, which gives us 14 equals t. 14 what? Seconds. Seconds. Okay? And c is the one after what distance does it stop? Well, we know it's going to stop after how many seconds? 14. But we want a distance this time, so we're not in our velocity formula. We're back to the distance, one. distance one. And remember, it's the distance and the breaking one. So that means that I'm simply going to replace the time with... 14. Okay, so here's our function. So we're just going to replace that with 14. Okay, so each piece builds on the other. That's why I started with one, even though your question was about three. So S equals 28 times 14 minus 14 squared. Somebody have a calculator because I can't do those in my head. Y'all might. I'm sorry, it's what now? Mm -hmm. Which gives us a final one, 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 meters. meters. Okay? So, the key to knowing which function to use is knowing which thing you're looking for. Am I looking for a distance? Then I have to use S, or, or if I'm looking for a height, H, right? The back goes back and forth. If I'm looking for how fast, that's always velocity, right? Okay. Good job. What else? You want to just go and look at some of the. Let's see. 77 number five. Let's look at that. At the start of a race. Okay, number three on that one. A ball is thrown vertically into the air, its acceleration. So that's an A function, right? It's important that we know that. The accel its acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. If its initial velocity of 12 is 12 meters, so initial velocity is 12 meters per second, okay? When does it reach its maximum height, okay? Well, from our studies of maximum and minimum, what do we know about maximum? Zero. It's going to be zero, right? The turning, it's a, one of the turning points. Those are zeros. But I'm looking for velocity. 
Yeah? Can I use this acceleration function to find velocity? No, I have to anti-differentiate, which is pretty easy. So I just know the function is a equals negative 9.8. Sometimes these functions are harder to work with because there are no variables in them, right? There's no t. But when you anti-differentiate, that's when you're going to put it, get your t, right? So it's going to be velocity equals negative 9.8t, because it's t to the first, plus a c, okay? Is it, oh, it was, there's some time lag going on? Okay, so there we are. So now, I've got my function, right? Am I happy with that? What am I going to do to find c? Right, if t is zero, okay, and there's our function, it tells us that if at, the, at this particular time, at the, when you get to the top of the function, it's gonna be 12, so I can just replace that. Yeah? Are we okay with that? So let's see what happens to our function now. Okay. So now when does it reach its maximum height? Right, because I'm in velocity, I'm not in height, am I? So we still have to enter differentiate, which means So negative 9.8 divided by 2, which is what? 4.9. Negative 4.9 t squared plus but if you OK, there we go. So the velocity is 0 at its maximum point, so I don't even have to go that far, do I? No, no. Oops, hold on. I don't want to do that. I want to do this. Come on, you. So velocity at that point is going to be what? Zero, when it reaches its maximum. And to solve that, get your T on one side. 9.8T equals 12. Divide both sides by 9.8 and I'm gonna get t equals what? 1.8. 1. 1. 1.2. 1. 1.2. Oh, sorry, somebody wanna run that one for me? 12 divided by 9.8. Okay. And is that close to what we're supposed to get? I don't know what page we're on. 77, number three. 1.22. Mm -hmm. They they use two decimal points, but two decimal places. But 1.2 would be fine because they didn't tell us, right? And the only other decimal we had in here was one decimal place. So usually you take your clues from the problem. If it had one decimal place, then one decimal place is good for you. Okay. So remember, at maximums, that value is going to be zero, right? At minimums, what's that value going to be? Zero. Keep that in mind because that's also something that you did previously that you're going to be have to that you're going to have on your next assessment, right? Okay. Let's look at a couple where we have the d differentiate twice so that we can get be prepared for that. Uh, then we'll talk about when we want to do this assessment. If we don't do the assessment on Friday, then we're going to, we can roll it over into the next time, I think, and it will still be fine, but that means we have to start our next topic on Friday, which is so very different that it's not going to interfere. So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of take a vote and see how prepared you think you'll be. I am still available at different times, so you can come and ask me questions. You can also email me and, and if you have a particular question, and I can show you and send it to you, 
right? Or post the dis or if you have a question about something, I can put a I can put a video of it of me working the problem and talking you through it on OneNote, so that anybody can go, go back and look at that question, right? So either way you want to handle it, because it would be really good if we can get through and get this over with, right? But it would also be really good if uh, we had some X, some really good scores on this calculus thing, right? That'd be a good thing too. So let's look at, just look at a couple of those. So look at, uh, number two has lots of pieces. So it says a car is traveling at 30 meters per second. Doesn't even need to tell me what that is. I know that's a what? Velocity, why? Meters per second, the unit. All right, so remember that you can always, you can tell um, units. And then it says that's 108, 108 kilometers per hour. A signal to stop by a police officer. When the driver applies the brakes, he decelerates at two meters per second squared, right? So that gives me an acceleration rate of negative two meters per second squared. So deceleration, why is that so important that they gave you deceleration on this case, in this case? Because when you're slowing down, that means it's going to be what kind of number? Negative. Negative. If it was accelerating, that would be a positive two. So watch out for deceleration, right? Same, same idea, same formula, but either one's positive and one's net or one's negative, right? Now, so there's our, there's our function. How long does it take him to stop? Well, when it's, you stop, what's your velocity? Zero. Okay? And we're asking ourselves, how long? And so how long is going to be measured in T? So we're looking for T. Well, I know I can't use the acceleration function to do that because there is no T, right? So what I have to do first is, since I'm looking at velocity, I have to change it to the velocity function by simply what? Antidifferentiation. So that's two, negative two, so it's going to be a t, right? Divide negative two by one, and that still gives you negative two, right? Plus some constant. Excellent. Good. Now, okay, how am I going to find c for this particular function? Where our velocity, when we want the velocity, we want the time when the velocity is zero, so that means that the velocity is going to be zero, right? So that gives you negative 2t, and, and time is also going to be zero, right, at the, at when you're doing this. So that means c is going to be zero, so do I even need a c? Nope. Okay. That is the case in almost every one of them. Yes, because it gives us a velocity, doesn't it? Sorry, I wasn't thinking it gave us a velocity. This is what we're going to be looking at. Sorry about that. So this, is, this is what we're going to be looking to find in a minute once I know the function. We want to see what happened because of the velocity. She's exactly right. We had an, ish, an initial velocity in this case, didn't we? Our initial velocity was 30 meters per second. So we do have a velocity. Thank you. So that's going to be 30 meters per second. Okay. After how much time? Zero, Zero right? Because we're just measuring a point in time, right? Plus C. So be careful. I was just going to make that point on the other one because remember we had an initial velocity on the other one of 12. And this one, we had an initial velocity as well. That's the only time when C is not going to become zero is if you have a time or, so, or you have an initial velocity. Okay, so be careful for the, when that's the case. So now we have our function. Our velocity function is negative 2t plus 30. We want our v to be 0, so that's simply negative 2t plus 30. Adding 2t to both sides gives us 2t equals 30. And even I can do this one. t equals what? 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Okay. Everyone okay? Most of the time, the problem with students, that students have with calculus is not the calculus. It's the algebra to solve it afterwards, right? And knowing when to do what. So be careful about the information they give you, all right? 
Now let's look at B. How far does he travel between the time he applies his brakes and the time he stops? So this time, I don't want acceleration. I don't want velocity. I want distance. the distance, right? How far does he travel? As the, and so that means that I'm going to have the distance. For, I'm going to have to have the distance formula, yeah? So our original function, our function that we have is v equals negative 2t plus 30. Okay. How can I change that into the distance function? Anti-differentiate again. So a second time. So you're just doing the same thing over and over. So that's going to become a t squared. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Okay. So negative t squared. Doesn't matter if you put the 1. Plus 30t plus c. Okay? Am I given a distance? Am I given a time? Nope. So that means c is going to be 0. We like it when that happens, right? Just disappears. Okay? Now, how far does he travel between the time he applies his brakes and the time he stops? So in other words, t. So what, what's the distance? Traveled, so that means we have to know time. Okay, and the time from last question was? 15 seconds. So distance equals negative one times 15 squared plus 30 times 15. Okay, 15 squared. Two twenty-five times negative one is negative two twenty-five. Good. Positive thirty times fifteen. Sorry. Right, remember, it's negative, yeah. and your t is the squared part. So the square of the t is positive, and then the negative in front makes your answer negative, right? Okay. So if, let's say that it said t is negative 15. Now that's a different story, isn't it? That means you take negative 15 and square it. So the negative would be part of the square then, but here the negative was in front of the t. And I'm replacing t with the positive number, so it's just the positive. So do you see the difference there? So that's positive. This one was negative, so that would give you the, the difference in the answer. So be careful about where the, where the sign is. That's make, what makes the difference. And 450 minus 225 is? Five. They're being very good to you, these. And what? Meters. Meters. Okay. Right? So... Anti-differentiating, not once, but twice. twice. Watch out for initial velocity. Why? Changes the C. It's about the only thing that does, right? Everything we had, C ended up being zero in most of the, in all, most of the others. So you need to get that assignment done so that we can then... So we can talk about the questions, the real questions you have. So you need to get those done if you haven't already done it. I'm just shocked. I mean, what'd you do with your days off? You had two days off. You didn't just do math the whole. You didn't do math the whole time. I just lay 